it, but we're good. And we can start. In the top left-hand side, we're going to begin the day with the blue Parodos player representing offside. It is Firefly. And his opponent in the bottom right, a player who I have always found an inspirational player in this matchup. My eyes will be glued to his build orders and taking notes. In the bottom right side, in the red, it's XY. Uh, I always thought XY was kind of at the cutting edge of really just clever openings in, in, in this matchup. Um, I guess I think part, partially inspired by Coffee, uh, who's, who's, you know, always been fantastic uh, as well. I think um, XY is very experienced, though. He, he's good at finding ways to kind of leverage his advantage. And TVP is a matchup where if you can surprise the Protoss, trick them a little bit, hit them 30 seconds earlier than they're expecting, Protoss players getting caught off guard are nowhere near as scary as a Protoss player that kind of feels like he sees everything coming a minute or two ahead of time. And we'll see if XY can pull that off. On the other hand, uh, Firefly is kind of the king of four gate blink, I feel like many times. And he's very good at just getting in there with his aggressive uh, timing attacks. And uh, I think there's, there's a kind of mixture of, are we going to see the Firefly who YOLOs in with the four gate blink? Or does he just tech right on up to three base Colossus? So there is a question mark for XY in terms of, can he scout that out and kind of suss out which version of Firefly is showing up today? Yeah, Firefly has really shown himself as a just an all around solid player. He can play a very standard things. He can do great aggressively. He can do great being forced into a longer game. XY, to me at least, is more of this specialist where he is good at the timings. He is good at being a bit funky and a bit weird. And if we see something here that's not 100% normal, I would not be too shocked because that is just XY in a nutshell. And that's where he finds a lot of his success. But against someone who is as well-rounded as Firefly, it's definitely going to be a challenge because, like I say, it's not like Firefly is just hinging his kind of entire game plan here on one build that has to go right from the start. He's at this point definitely well-rounded enough to kind of take on whatever XY throws at him. And to kind of accept that and to go with it. Next, we're actually going to see the first tech structure here. Going to be a robo facility from Firefly. So just really going to play one of the safest openings you can. I love that this has come back in popularity. You know, after after such a long time, people are like, oh, you can't do that. That's kind of weird. It's not the best. And I think nowadays people are like, wait a second. This shuts down any sort of cyclone aggression. The early robo, it gives you such good scouting. And, you know, it, it's a small change. People haven't really talked about it, but I think it's quite big. The Observer, they, the Observer mm -hmm. still costs 75 gas, but they build an extra like seven seconds quicker or whatever. Oh, I mean, maybe it's only five seconds, but it adds up. Basically, they build quicker. Yes, they're a bit more visible for the Terran to like scan them down, especially when they go into surveillance mode, but it, it's an incredibly safe opening and quick Colossus has never been bad. Not to mention what I've loved is a lot of players even use the Robo just for scouting and like Hero would go back into Storm afterwards and play like a Storm Drop Charge Lot style, which is not what you'd expect. Normally, you'd expect more of what Firefly is doing here, which is, you know, I'm going to get the Robo Bay, I'm going up to Quick Colossus, maybe even a Disruptor Drop is something that people can mix in. And the Adept already getting some great scouting info as the Marines try to get some damage. Nice micro for Firefly, grab a free Marine Shade out, you'll regenerate those shields with no problem. Yeah, and I see the Adept being active already. The Hellion's going to get through and it scouts everything because it's all on the front door pretty much. So he gets the full sight of what's going on. We're going to get ourselves a probe as well. So we get a bit of damage done too. And that information is obviously just absolutely key here. So being able to see Robo, Robo Bay. And now you just know what is up and what is happening. And uh, yeah, as that prism finishes up here, we're going to see ourselves Firefly really getting ready to tech as well. There's Disruptor. So maybe even some prism speed. We're going to see some Disruptor drops. I love it. I love it. You know, the, the Disruptor drop is good. It's been scouted, so I don't. I think you should rely too hard on it. And with the drop harass coming in, Disruptor doesn't help defend this pretty much at all. Like it's it's not useful defensively. It's there just for hitting the workers. So are there enough gateway units in position? Is always the question I'm asking myself. Two adepts right now. No stalkers warping in. Fireflies being so greedy. He does warp in one stalker, but he's nowhere near that main base. And this drop has the potential to find some damage. That being said, perfectly timed shield battery. So oh, I like the sneaky drop in the corner though. Yeah, gets to unload first. He's going to be full power as he runs in. That means you're potentially going to be able to still get rid of at least a couple probes here. Just might take a couple of attempts. There goes one. There goes two. We pop the super battery. The units do get here, though. So you bought yourself a bit of time to reposition. Of course, still, I think, for XY, you're loving this, right? You get a few workers. You get out. Now we're going to see this disruptor showing up, though. And XY kind of stacks oh. the workers up, which means six SCVs go down. Not bad at all for the first disruptor shot of the game. Yeah, there's a Viking out, you know? It's like one of these things where it's like, okay, he can deal with that, but the Observer's out front. It sees everything in his base. 
So he's not just going to fly into the, you know, the Viking or anything like that. I mean, he actually does fly right towards this base. This is a very <laughs> dangerous drop. <laughs> the Viking, I guess, was busy going after the Observer with the scan. So he's like, you know what? I can sneak in here. Not a, not a bad move at all. And uh, Immortal's coming in behind it with Blink. So I like that Firefly is just rounding his tech out. A lot of players, when they do an odd opening like this, they kind of like, look, I'm just never getting Blink. I'm just going to have a few Stalkers on anti-air. If I get out positioned, I'm kind of screwed. But... I like that he's going backwards and saying that XY is just going mega macro mode, like third command center's done, double eBay, three barracks coming up. XY is doing what is very popular. We noticed in GSL, for instance, in the earlier rounds, a lot of the top Terran players just kind of saying, you know what? I want to play three bases and then we can start trading with each other. So a super safe style for XY. Yeah, the build of Firefly is actually kind of cool, right? I mean, to, to open one Disruptor, just use that as kind of light pressure. And then he's, like you say, going backwards into that blink. And Immortal also, so he's kind of rounding out that army, but it makes for quite a strong army now. As the gates finish, he will, you know, really kind of double down on this Stalk account. And he will have a good bit of pressure here. We'll see what Firefly can do, because he is venturing across the map. He is believing, at the very least, that he's got some opportunity to try and get some damage done right now. So... We'll see if that's true. Like you said, it's a very safe build and setup from XY. He's got a bunker, he's got a tank, he's got tank high ground as well. The only problem being is uh, right oh, now that Disruptor oh, has potential and he is going to lose the Medivac oh, as well. Oh my god. Disaster strikes. Deadly. Wow. Okay, well that, that does it. Devastating. <laughs> that was crazy. That was devastating. I mean, getting the full Medivac and the units that couldn't fit in the Medivac and the tank. There's one tank, another tank on the high ground now. But dude, this is disastrous for XY. He's relying on those tanks on the high ground. And of course, this is one of these pre-stim timings. We always talk about three command center builds being dangerous against Protoss because it extends the period when you don't have map control. The Immortal drop on the high ground. He's shooting the Marines. Immortal's not known for their high IQ, but a good bit of micro <laughs> from Firefly does fix that. They take the siege tanks down. That's going to absolutely annihilate Firefly, dude. What a crisp win. Yeah, he just, uh, you know, like I said, kind of set up a bit of aggression. Clearly felt as though he had his moment coming through, and then he just struck, and it couldn't have gone better. The few units were out the front, I was like, well, that's kind of bad, because they don't have stim to get away. Then the disrup disruptor is clearly in range, so you got to lift in the medevac, the stalkers are immediately there blinking, and obviously just tank fire as your defense at that point ain't going to cut it. You're going to need the extra units to kind of get there, so just a very easy way to close that one out, and that is going to be, in the end, of course, then Firefly adding himself 1-0 advantage to the start of the day. And off to a happy start, as of course everyone in this uh, group right now having played one Swiss round, we are at 1-0 with these guys, so if Firefly, if he wins this, he would be 2-0 and, and looking to move through the playoffs next week. Um, and yeah, looking convincing as well. It, it feels to me like, I, I feel like the last few seasons of WTL, Firefly has kind of just crept his way forwards in, in terms of dominance. Like I, I, A few years ago, you know, you were casting these guys, we were watching them, Firefly was always very good. But I definitely feel like all that experience over the last few years playing against top dogs and, you know, stealing a lot of important points against the Clems of this world, against the very top, you know, Terran, Protoss and Zerg players. Fireflies just got this air of decisiveness, uh, I think is the best word to describe it since that, that last map was basically just a, I'm going to jump on top and finish it off. He's looking good, man. I, I think he's been competing against such a high level of competition in the team leagues and, and it's really brought up his, his level. No, absolutely. It's, um, Firefly's been one of my favorite players to kind of watch over the last year and a bit, right? Where it's just been this kind of progress and process from him where he's been improving and he's been kind of like the anchor of his team a couple of times over as well. So it's just really cool to see him, not, you know, kind of evolving from that where he was the player that could win a couple maps to now being that kind of anchor of the team, constantly pushing the kind of the level further, the bar higher, and uh, now... You know, a real competitor in this Asia region, one of the favorites when we enter in. If it wasn't for Oliveira, I would imagine Firefly would do extremely well in these events, perhaps be one, you know, the favorite alongside a Scion or so. So yeah, um, great to see his progress, and you can just see, again, cool builds as well, right? Like, he doesn't necessarily just do the standard, the baseline. He kind of plays his own thing sometimes, and they make sense, and that's what's so cool about it. That last game, it all fit together yeah. so nicely, and uh, that netted him the win. Crimson Court for map two now. I mean, yeah, it was it's a really nice way to start. Obviously, like Firefly dropped a map yesterday to Jim, but it's PvP and it's Jim. And uh, I think we all know that Jim is someone we'll never kind of just go, oh, 
that guy that guy is easy no it's jim he's he's you yeah. know was was the best protoss player in china for uh -huh. quite a while or the best player overall and that sort of thing and, and dropping a map in pvp is basically part for the course no matter who your opponent is so i think firefly really is like you said very close to just knocking on that door of Oliveira. but uh it's kind of weird when you've got a guy who's such an outlier in the region it, 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 you kind of need more than that right you can't just like be you know like it, it's like you don't see the progress from oh i'm second place in in, in there to like right there there's because there's such a big gap but i do think that gap is closing steadily over time well as again again number two i'm gonna be starting off on the top right hand side of crimson court it is gonna be the red darren player from invictus gaming xy And in the bottom left side, a great decisive game one victory. It's Firefly. Now, I uh, I wonder now that you know, I feel like uh, like we've you know guys like yourself taking over some of the the production lead a bit more these days, Wardy. We're still doing intros on every map. You know, I thought we were I thought we thought we were breaking that habit at some point. What do you reckon? Are we gonna are we gonna buck that trend, or is this stuck with Starcraft forever? Is it too deep now? Fourteen it's years too, in the game for us to change. Deep, man. It's too deep, and we and we also have like the two minutes of the very start, or the minute at the very start, where unless the proxy is going down, what else are we gonna say? So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> see, it's it's all good on my I, side if we don't do it, but then like you know, the moment we get like an actual producer again and or a cameraman, they're like, we need to do the intros. The cameraman's ready to do the epic twirly zoom on the camera. It's like okay. <laughs> Gotta stay in practice just in case. I'm like, we could just be talking about the strategy. They could just show player shots, man. Like, I think I don't think there's anything wrong with just showing player shots. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We want to see more of the players. Let's go for it. But imagine, <laughs> imagine that uh, fitting together, pig. That would be uh, outlandish, if you ask me. Even Marfu's in the chat saying to us, he's like, "I'm perfect. Let it go. It's okay. I don't need. I I'm good. I can do my job without zooming in on the player's base at the start." <laughs> yeah, uh, it is so anyway, such a uh, I'm sure. It is, yeah, yeah. I always, you know, there, there's there's just a, a, a habit that we got into many years ago, and it does kind of, um, you know, it, 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 I can imagine in a mirror matchup when you're a colorblind person watching, and for some reason red and blue look kind of similar, maybe it's nice, but for most people, I don't think it really matters. Uh, anyways, a bit of probe harass early. He hasn't found any damage, but the Reaper's coming over. This is Crimson Court, which is a map which, this is the ESL version. Um, for those who don't know, I didn't know until Mapu just messaged me. It has only two rocks on those side things rather than on the ladder version there's four rocks on top of each other so thank you mapu for letting me know about that this map having the the, the sides of the map kind of cut off is very unique in that layout mm -hmm. oh careful xy Ooh. yeah don't lose that reaper but yeah to continue your point the the sides of the map being cut off does make this map interesting and i've loved it it's it's really kind of an innovative way to kind of have a map that plays very differently some people do try and expand down the size they mine out those minerals they open that space and then a lot of people just say no let's play a very narrow game let's play through the middle only and that creates such a different dynamic of how the game plays so it's really been fascinating to watch it's been one of those things that's just been really cool to see um this is i mean actually like a lot of the new maps a lot more than i thought i was going to uh, and this one really stands out for me because i do just feel like i'm still seeing so many different ways of expanding and you know testing and figuring out what everyone's going to do there's so much potential for each game to look unique and different reaper's getting a good scout here so far it's gonna come in sees the robo timing sees the twilight in a second as well and gets out of there wow always feels good when you can do that meanwhile protoss gets the scout off but fireflies adapt does go down sees the tech lab on the starport though so that tells you no medevac aggression this game we don't need to be so worried right here and now and uh, that Robo on the front of the natural third base attempt coming down. Two gate, blink third, always a very solid opening. But it is kind of on the, the lesser kind of phase in terms of the amount of defense you have available. So Firefly is not playing super safe. Like if, if you're a bit more paranoid, you go three gate blink is a bit more of it in the middle of the road. Four gate blink aggressive. Firefly is like, no, nah, it's cool, man. I, I, I got a real clean game one. I can just comfortably macro up and I can't wait to see what he does from there because he's going to have heavy pressure coming his way even though there's a bunker xy is going liberated tank and that's usually a sign of the terran wanting to be highly aggressive that being said he's not building any marines and he goes for a third command center this is a really odd mix up from xy in terms of you've got signs of aggression in the tank marine liberator but then you've also got signs of i'm gonna play a greedy slow game with the third command center i mean is he possibly just going to turtle with this that, that seems like it would be a bit of a wild decision it would 
I, I don't see what else you can do, right? Like, yeah, the lib's gonna go across the map, but then the tank's just gonna stay at home. You don't really have the marines to support it on a push, so I imagine, yeah, we just sit back, we chill, we take that third base, and we start adding the extra barracks for the further upgrades and everything as well, so... Yeah, I was kind of with you, though. Like, when you see the live, you see the tank, you think, right, he's going across the map. He's going to put some pressure on. Narrow map like this is difficult to get flanked. It's difficult to cut off reinforcements. So you can really set up a good spot and deny that early third. But, uh, yeah, XY decides, no, I'm just going to send the lib. I'm going to macro up myself. Kind of similar to the last game in the sense of he's just like, hey, I want to get to three bases, and then we can start to trade. Then I can start to take fights. Last game, it never really got set up as this liberator gets shut down immediately. Good catch from Firefly. That's that's part of what you know. What we saw with the liberator there is part of why I was doubting it a little bit because the liberator is so good when you're doing other things at the same yep. time. Like it's such a nice unit when there's lots of stuff happening. Um, that's why we see it. Usually there's marine tank on the front. There's a widow mine drop hitting the main. Liberator hits the natural, and it's like man, that liberator does so much and causes so many problems. But when you're just sitting at home. I, I actually thought XY would wait until he saw Stalkers outside his base and then he would send it in. Like, it's like, a, oh, this is just going to kind of punish you if you get a bit too aggressive. Give me something on your side of the mode to, uh, map to poke. But honestly, it looks like he has a, a convergence point in game one he was aiming for, where he's going, you know, I've got me tanks, me stim bio, me three bases, and I would expect a 1-1 one, one ghost bio tank all in with an SCV pool. I don't think XY wants to play a long macro game with Firefly because we talked about Firefly just being the kind of more experienced, well-rounded, uh, multitasking player, I would say, than XY in, in some regards. Maybe not more experienced, but I'd say a little bit quicker in that mid-game and a bit more all-consuming. I, I think as XY, you don't want to give a Protoss too much time in general uh, just because that is a scary choice as a Terran player. And with this build, with the fast third commands, and he's already in a hurry. And the big change for XY is he's only gone one eBay, right? So he's got plus one weapons almost done. I think he'll add plus one armor, get a few ghosts, and we will probably see him go for a big push. No real splash damage for Firefly. He's got Zealots coming forward, Stalkers starting to micro. There are Immortals and Sentries at home gathering, but he's not moving them across the map. So Firefly is looking like he wants to harass. He doesn't really want to go for the big frontal push, just kind of creating a bit of space for himself. And as I said, he is actually moving Moving forward with the immortals as well yep he is gonna get ready to go firefly clearly just kind of comfortable with his seven to eight minute timing windows which is exactly what hit in game number one as well so he's moving up he's getting ready and yeah he clearly believes he can kind of send this so i mean spreading out i love the depots anything to choke up these elves anything to take shots that is not going to be on the army straight away is going to be a general a general benefit but we blink through the top side we get rid of the tanks there very easily. The bio just had to back away from that. Now we can force field and put some work onto this orbital. We're going to blink again, try and get rid of this siege tank high ground. So again, we're dismantling the defense. And very well done so far by Firefly denying that third from being in position. And if nothing else, now he's mining the third base where his opponent is not. Getting rid of those tanks is huge. The tanks for the range advantage for Terran. With those gone, the threat, the immortals, the stalkers, and potential sentries, Firefly finds himself, as long as he pulls his zealots back, with a decently long-ranged army, right? The the stalkers and the immortals, they have the same range, same range as the marauders, outrange the marines. The zealots do have to be pulled back, though, and I like the way that he's not overcommitting fourth base in a robo bay. Firefly says, cool, I'm denying your mining. That's good enough for me. XY needs to get that mining on that base, but he doesn't want to pull SCVs into this. I think he should be stimming the bio at some point. He's trying to be real conservative because he knows Firefly wants to like bait him into over stimming. But uh, he does have to make sure he doesn't let himself get bullied too hard. And taking this gold base on the right, not a bad way of avoiding the frontal collision. It is still a matter of time though, where I think XY will be going for an all-in SCV pull at some point. It's just about picking his timing. Um, and the stalkers for Firefly are making that really hard. Yep. I mean, just continuing to come in, right, and just be annoying. A couple more workers and units going down the front. We lose the obs, we lose some vision, but behind all of this, Firefly just sets up into base number four. He's got no need to kind of push in all together, and, you know, if XY is going to start pushing out, by then we're going to have disruptors out. We have extended thermal line, so eventually we're going to also move into Colossi. Just uh, Firefly saying that right now he needs something to help, and that will be the disruptor. Just build a little bit more quickly. One disruptor much more effective than that single Colossus, so I like that. Just to give him a better chance of holding on here. As we continue to try and slow down this advance, the Terran army is coming, Pig, right through the center. Yeah, you know, I keep expecting that boy pull because we don't see any progression in terms of the, the upgrades. Like, there's no second eBay, no armory, no fourth command center. Uh, Zealot run by on the right side is going to be a problem. These stalkers, quite a few of them get taken down on the front, but the Zealot run by is going to cause damage as well. So that's going to force XY back. I, mean, I think XY is getting to a pretty scary army, but as the disruptors start to come out, he, if he wants to go, he's got to go now. 
Yeah, I mean, he's gonna get rid of that disruptor here. So we are gonna lack in splash damage, but decent force field chokes up the retreat. Allows the Zell to get a few more shots off. The Storms with the Concave on the high ground doing decently. And Firefly not gonna chase that down too heavily. Realizing here that he can just sit tight and just hang back. And just let XY be the one to try and find damage. Those Zealots already did well on the right side. We've got another few coming in once again. And that's just going to keep on causing problems. Every time Zealots show up here, this is just something which XY doesn't want to have to go back and think about. XY looks like he, he feels he feels a timer right now, right? What he feels like he's got to get something done, and that's going to play to Firefly's advantage. If he can bait a few more stims out, notice the Zealot pullbacks. Ooh. He's got that concave on the high ground. You can't really push into that as, as XY, but at the same time, without a third mining right now, you know, he's been so interrupted there by these Zealots, he's kind of got to get something done. A fresh mule comes down, Zealot happy to chew down that fresh mule, and XY is not progressing at all. Firefly, though, he's got the fourth established. He's got 2-2 about to finish. The disruptor count is growing. This is a massive advantage for the Protoss, who's just kind of, he's forced XY into an awkward position, and he's held him there. It's not like Firefly has done one big sudden winning move, but he just cleared out the tanks, made, denied the third a little bit, and since then, he's just been on the front with a heavy Stalker account pressuring, defending with the Stalker Immortal. Firefly's still got great progression. There's no pressure on Firefly to win the game right now because, hey, man, you're just way ahead on the upgrades and you're getting further and further ahead every second. Do a bit of multi prong see if you can catch him out here. Zealot's overwhelming. A few lives on the right side, not sieged up. Bio on the left, getting ravaged by the Marauder Disruptor. Big Disruptor shot on the north. The Command Center lifts on the left side of the map. The Bio will come back to defend the Stalkers on that left side, but Firefly happy with the damage he's found, and he's got 3-3 on the way behind this. Yep, he is just going to keep on going, man. I mean, a few more SCVs are going down over here, and the defense is really just not there at all for XY. Firefly looking good of 20 workers. As you mentioned, the upgrades are getting better and better, improving from 2-2 to 3-3, and his opponent just sat on 1-1, unable to really find the time to afford anything else. Basically reliant on these uh, Liberators right now to kind of buy you time and to stop the final push from happening, but obviously during all of this, you just keep on going as uh, Firefly. We do lose a Disruptor here. This Disruptor goes a bit too far, turns around. The split is good, as we have our units continue to just split apart from Firefly trade out, and it does look as though he's going to have enough for the final fight to win out. And Firefly is going to find himself. Game two, first best three of the day is his. 